This is your daily briefing and you are most welcome to it. Um, I've been overthinking the Pocatino returns to Tottenham thing and I have to share with you some major concerns. The first is that I've, I've seen in a couple of places now people make the, the suggestion that this would be a, a, a panacea, a magic bullet for a lot of Tottenham's problems. It would certainly get Levy bang out of uh, jail. Um, his popularity ratings would, would go through the roof. Again, I'd say that would be a, a false dawn, um, and we'll go, come back to that. But some have even suggested that, that ha Harry Kane could be convinced to stay if, if Poch did the old, we're getting the band back together. I don't think that'd be the case at all. I think that we would see in Hotspur Way, if they were to do an Amazon type documentary doodah, of Levy walking in with Poch behind him and Harry Kane doing a, a quick remake of um, that, that moment in the office where David Brent goes to the um, sort of hungry horse type pub to, to meet his date, who's also lied presumably, about her appearance. And he sort of looks at her and looks back to the camera and goes, and you've got to bear in mind how much time all of these guys spend together. And if we call it as it is, and we don't dress it up, all of that time, the fruition of that was failure. And what fresh voice is Maurizio going to bring to the dressing room at, 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 at Tottenham. He's only been gone six months. Or well, he's only been at PSG six months, but I mean, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. I mean, he's been gone, it's 18 months maybe. Fresh voice, don't buy it. But there's the other thing as well. And if we if we look look beyond that, and again, um, I've, I've, I've recently taken a subscription up with um, Le Keep, um, the French outlet, because they, have the stuff on on the ground they're reputable they're not reporters they're actual journalists but the qatari owned psg i cannot see them rolling over to have their, their tummies tickled potch has only been with them six months as i say and the whole thing has been really misrepresented by a lot of people the a bit by the, the whole thing i mean Poch, pochettino's situation and not only did Poch play for them, but he knows the club. And the idea that he would be unaware of the politicking that goes on at PSG, the idea that he, it would come to a surprise to him that Leonardo is a tough guy, the idea that... Oh, and this is the other one I wanted to mention to you, because some, most of you listening, I like to think I appeal to the top 5%. I don't know how deluded I am. When people say, oh, he's living in a hotel, the bottom feeders, and I'm talking intellectually here, immediately think of a, um, uh, a travel lodge outside Redditch, <laughs> right? And high flyers, the top, top, top people, frequently may live in hotels for extended periods of time, but we're not talking about holiday inns, we're talking about just taking a suite and it makes sense because the whole hoo-ha and faff, um, I, th I think, you know, you see, you see footballers and you, you, we've seen some, some of their apartments turn up on, on clips and, and it's very rarely they look particularly lavish and it's because they're, they're kind of never there. So the idea of creating this sort of false thing of, oh, I, this is my home in England and I've got a home in New York, um, Quite a lot of people, and this has been going on for a long time. So you would, if you like, watch a program on the uh, TV thing on the Savoy that was on before the COVID thing um, cut that. Um, you'd get like people like Peter O'Toole, you know, actors and performers would stay there for for extended periods, perhaps just while they were doing a film. And so the idea that he's living in a hotel, this 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 conjures up this to some people. And I think it's just because they're, they're unworldly. This image of Corby trouser presses and, um, oh, hi, Carol, um, uh, can I have some uh, Nescafe sachets sent up, please? And it isn't like that. <laughs> but 
are the Qatari owned PSG gonna gonna put up with with being rolled over after six months? You know, and the reports that, or not reports, but the inference, the suggestion from people that, you know, Poch is unhappy, Poch is living in a hotel, Poch is faced with some people that uh, uh, say hurty words to him, like, be here on time and win stuff. Maurizio would have been aware of all of these things. And on Monday of last week, we're now Saturday, but he did this, like I told you, he did that th uh, thing with um, the PSG official site and spoke about um, how he was going, his aims for the future, the philosophy, shtick, all of these things. And the thing that keeps on bugging me since I discovered when the date was, because I'm not a season ticket holder, is that the cutoff date for the season tickets is the 5th of June. So, you got people who attend Hotspur Way on behalf of the press, and they were told after Maurizio, Maurizio, after Mourinho was binned, they were told, "Oh yeah, at the end of the season. That's what we're aiming for with the new guy." Then we were told, "Yeah." Then we were told, "Oh, it'll be you know, um, you know, end of the month." That looks like it's not going to happen. So, if you were going to mount a smash and grab, if you were going to attempt to get in a guy that was going to save your, not just your face and your reputation, but was going to safeguard your takings, then wouldn't you have done this for Poch much sooner? It just, it just strikes me as a curious thing to leave to the last minute because uh, without being short-termist or looking for reasons to be desperately negative, if, unless you're going to extend the date of season ticket renewals beyond the 5th, one could almost say, well, what's the point of getting Poch in on the 10th or the 6th? It doesn't stack up. So... It, it, I think I think what we're seeing in the, in the lack of appointment, and this isn't reading stuff into uh, the situation. This is this is just looking at what we're seeing and describing it. I think the, the the reality is that Levy is having a real problem finding somebody. He's got no um, sponsorship. The stadium, yeah, it's amazing, but there's lots of amazing stadiums all over Europe, all over the world. And as I've said to you before, training facilities. You'd be surprised. Lots of people have got tech and science and doctors and stuff now. You know, so you've, like I go back to it, you've got to be pretty unworldly to suggest that these are big, big, big uh, pitches, big, big sellers, big incentives. Um, so the season ticket thing, I had some ITK. Um, this morning, a little morsel that um, the renewals are causing concern. They're causing a lot of admin headaches because they're having to then start combing through the waiting list and, and offer them on. But I think a greater concern has to be the business of this bounce back. Now, in the economy, general economy, not just a football economy, but the football economy will follow, you know, what's going on in the rest of the world. And... You watching this must be a little bit like me, that you've um, been going out, venturing out into the big wide world. And I don't know if it's just the, the, the crazy place where I live, but there isn't much going on. Today, it's not a beautiful day, it's quite humid, it's quite sunny, there's no rain. But I went into a local little uh, town and the pubs were not f absolutely rammed full. The barber shops were still empty. A um, little bit of busy business in the cafes, but people aren't properly going out yet. And I don't know if they're still really scared or um, what the deal is, but there's been a change. There's been a real shift in the pattern of these things. And I just wonder, I really fear for um, the business of a full stadium revenue coming back. Because there's going to be a lot of people out there that I believe are going to be pretty wary about getting on public transport and 
you know, it's like this, the absolute myth of, of, of um, COVID uh, regs at an airport. You know, you, you stand two metres apart and you've got your mask on and then you go through into the blah, 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 blah and cut to the chase, where do you end up? In a big tin cigar with recycled air. Because you do know there's no fresh air inside an aeroplane, don't you? Because <laughs> otherwise it would decompressurise and fall out the sky. So the the, the very notion that travelling on an aeroplane is safe, um, it, that's why they open the door and nobody rushes in. Because all the farts and all the burps and all the God knows what and the half-eaten sandwiches, all that, you're all sharing that for the duration. So some people, not all, but some, a good few, are going to view the idea of getting on public transport going to a stadium and then, however you want to phrase it, being squished in with 62, or what was it, 61,999 other people. There's not going to be a lot of takers for that, or there's not as many takers as there would have been. So that's where we are. Um, season tickets down, no manager, no trophies, no stadium sponsor, no nothing. That's, that's, that's the, the, the Tottenham DNA. We've, we've got it back at last. Right, we've got a little bit over. I know minds tend to wander, so um, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for your time. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And I should have said this at the beginning, really, but really, big thank you for all the people that have got involved. Um, the comments are nice and lively underneath these things um, and getting far more views than I ever, ever thought was going to happen. So that's a genuine thanks from me. Good luck. Keep it on.